So the last speaker in this session is Mario Malichki, who is speaking on behalf of Liz Wager, who can't be here with us today, but hopefully is listening and watching on the live stream. Um, the title of Mario's talk is The Role of Pub Peer Comments in Alerting Editors to Serious Problems with Clinical Research Publications. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as you have heard, and as you can see, unfortunately, I'm not Liz Wager. This would have been an all-female panel as the one we started off, uh, but unfortunately now stuck with me. And I'll try to do my best to present Liz's and Emma's work. Um, just a little disclaimer, I, um, I was not a part of this research. I have did my best that in the last three days I replicate most of it so that I <laughs> feel confident giving this speech. Um, but please, if there is maybe a question that I can't answer, at the end there will be a contact from Liz and possibly she's even on Twitter. Um, watching this as you can right now from home, and we'll get through it. Um, so Emma and Liz looked at post-publication comments in PubPeer. Uh, PubPeer is um, the other big uh, database that allows post-publication commenting on articles. So it's not just, uh, it incorporates all of the ones from PubMed Commons. Could I get the slides moving there as well? Um, Will work. Can we get but the slides it, advancing, please? Is there, yeah. um, but it does uh, allow, unlike PubMed Commons, it allows anonymous commenting. So while uh, PubMed Commons only allows users who have registered or published a study, in a PubPeer you can uh, use a pseudonym or uh, be completely anonymous. Um, if you are familiar with PubPeer, you may have read it from Retraction Watch or some other database because it has been previously used to correct literature and because of it, because of some comments, some articles have been retracted and recently um, developers of StatCheck have posted for more than 50,000 articles in psychology journals corrections where they found inconsistencies in p-values on those data. So it is a platform um, that allows a cross-field uh, commenting. So the goal of their research was to look at how often comments of PubPeer actually identify serious misconduct or errors in articles, um, how often are journal editors alerted to these comments, and also do the authors respond to these comments. Um, the three journals that uh, Liz chose were BMC, BMJ, and Lancet, BMC Medicine, because they were familiar with the editors of the journal so they could contact them and ask for explanations, uh, and also because they wanted biomedical journals because of their own backgrounds so that they are able to evaluate those comments uh, when they do the content analysis themselves. Uh, they took two year period from uh, end of 2013 till the end of 2016, so any comment that has been published uh, for those three journals. Um, and they classified the comments uh, after, of course, looking through all of them based on the categories that you see here, what is strong evidence of FFP, uh, allegation of FFP, any other misconduct, be it a redundant publication or self-plagiarism, honest errors, praise, uh, links to other comments or other information, methodological errors, and so on. Um, in total, uh, they had, um, uh, I'll come back to this, uh, in total they had uh, 344 comments on these journals. So what I did the research, uh, I wanted to see how much of that would be of all the journals. So this is 150 different articles. So in that sort of th almost three year period, it was 17,000 articles that were published in these three journals. So this is a little bit le less than 1% of comments uh, on articles that have been published. Of those, 177 comments were related to almost 100 articles, while the others were on editorials, commentaries, and, and different issues. And as you can see, majority of the signed uh, commentaries were from PubMed Commons, while the anonymous ones came directly from PubPeer. Um, this is how these comments look like when you open them. So if you go to PubPeer, you can put in a DOI or search for a journal or search through an author and then see the comments that come out. And these are all comments belonging to one of the articles. So the first comment that you see on your right side is when someone actually linked that someone else noticed that there has been a comment published on this article. And then the second comment completely to your right uh, down is when they say what could be the problem of this article. Now this is allegation of FFP because they 
point out in that image why they believe it is a manipulation of the image. Now, I'm not specific to this field, but what they say is that the background cut the cells, and this is not normal looking cells, so they believe that some kind of image manipulation occurred here. And then you can see the joking comments or comments on other blogs of people who have commented on other things. So it is a commenting sort of website like YouTube or somewhere else where people will just continue commenting on the same thing if they find it interesting and not necessarily linking two that the, you can link who's all of the comments were. So you have two options in Papier. You can make all your comments be linked, but you can also log on each time anonymously so it will seem that different people commented uh, even though it was one same individual. Um, so of all the comments that they looked at, of the 177 that were related to these 100 articles, um, two articles could potentially um, be FFP two were allegations of FFP. So the two that were FFP, one was the one I showed you where there was believed there was a image manipulation in the article. The other one was where uh, a whistleblower posted that um, what was written in the article of the time that the data was collected could not be true because that was not the time that data collection occurred, so that the data that presented is most likely fabricated. Uh, the two weak evidences were um, of one figure looking strange but having no evidence that it actually is manipulated but just being a little bit suspicious, and the other one of reusing um, of uh, of that someone, that the same authors have several other retracted papers and that they use the same methodology so that it's quite possible that this uh, could also be a publication that needs to be looked at. That's why it's classified as allegation of FFP. Um, the uh, other misconduct were reuse of the same figures in the data without acknowledging them and uh, also uh, not mentioning the conflict of interest uh, of the authors of the paper that they were doing in. As you can see, the majority of actually the comments were linked to other comments on other websites and methodological issues of the articles. Um, now, if we try to put this in numbers, it would mean that on each, every hundred articles uh, commented on, it is possible that up to four may have some problems and two additional may have less severe problems in them. Uh, now, do bear in mind, as I said at the beginning, this is based only on less percent, less than 1% of commenting on all the articles that were published, uh, so the real percentages would need to be maybe weighted. Um, one thing to notice is that no editor was aware of the PubPeer comments. Now, PubPeer does not guarantee that they will notify like PubMed comments. Their main goal is to notify the authors of the articles that someone has commented. But even so, only five authors replied to these comments. So of the 177 comments, only five authors replied back on what was happening. Uh, the journals, however, were aware, and this is why Liz chose the journals and that she was working on, because she wrote the editors, and they were aware of all of these issues, even other issues that I haven't mentioned of the errors that were happening, but they came from different sources, and usually from whistleblowers or um, being alerted from other websites. Um, so to conclude, although it is a very useful uh, tool that someone can comment, we see that a lot of it is still done in a way that it may not reach the targeted audience. Now, unlike PubMed comments, Papier is not, Papier comments are not visible on the actual articles or they won't be in the PDFs or somewhere when you download the, uh, when you download the documents. And also, uh, even that if they do uh, alert to possible misconduct, there's no guarantee that no one will look at it. So five errors that have been reported, uh, four have been corrected, but one is yet to be corrected of those that I've mentioned, uh, and it's questionable if it will. Um, also, uh, even though the editors were aware of this, it may seem that it is unlikely that editors have enough time or uh, resources to look at comments also coming from different websites. Um, and as you are aware, because these were three biomedical journals, we may not uh, extrapolate this or generalize it to any other field or even think that this is generalizable for the medical field. Uh, and we know that from Papier that the commenting actually occurs much more on other uh, article types than on clinical research that occurs. 
Now, Liz would like to take quite a few people. Um, I will withdraw from pronouncing all the names because I don't want to do bad. Mine isn't hard. Mine isn't easy to pronounce, let alone me trying to attempt the other ones. Uh, and again, I would like to mention that if I fail to answer any of your questions, please contact Liz for any additional explanations. Thank you. Okay, if there are any questions, um, I will ask one as I see Theo is heading to the microphone. Um, in terms of thinking about the value of, a, um, of raising a concern about a published paper on PubPeer versus to the journal directly, because as you said, some of the journals were not aware of the comments on PubPeer. I mean, what is the thinking around the value of that to, for the person raising the issue? Well, I think we heard it already before. Uh, some journals do not allow us um, easy ways of commenting and sometimes there's a limited window when they will allow you to publish really a letter or expression of concern. So direct contact in the institution of contact in the journal always comes back to when will you get the answer and perhaps people in the online community believe that if you put it out there uh, someone has to take uh, charge. Otherwise, it could be an email between you and the editors. And like peer review comments, are you allowed to share that email? Are you allowed to share the response of the editors? How long will that take? This way, you may skip a line and put it out there. And even if you were wrong, and in one of these cases, uh, authors replied and said, no, you're wrong in this case. This was not a manipulation. Uh, we showed it with this. At least you get a quick answer back. But um, if only not even 5% of the authors respond, then I think we would wish that we could get journals to force the authors to do it. But all of those who are editors know that it's not always easy to get information back from the authors for studies that have been published a few years back. So this way, at least they're out there somewhere. And I mean, you made a reference to sort of more basic science, and I can just say for Cell Press, for example, we will require an author to respond to any allegation that comes directly to us, but not necessarily one that's just posted on PubPeer. But if somebody, anonymous or not, emails us about a concern about something we published, we will always require the author respond to us. In the last peer review conference, we presented a study when we looked at duplicate publications. Unfortunately, me as a third party who alerted editors, we got only 70% of editors back. Mm -hmm to reply to us so. of expressions of concern. So I'm not saying yeah, it isn't yeah, true, but yeah, it depends yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. the journalists no, who are doing yeah. it. Theo. Yeah. So Theo Bloom, BMJ, and I'm one of the editors who was not aware of comments on Pop here until Liz Wager wrote about it. But the BMJ has a very active um, rapid response system of, of commenting, and that's why all the issues had already been raised, dealt with, and discussed before we were aware of them on Pop here. And I think um, the real issue is that PubPeer allows on anonymity, and we mostly ask people to use their real names and won't just publish an allegation from someone who's not prepared to sort of say who they are. Um, and I'm sort of interested because we've had a lot of this discussion at this meeting between open peer review versus blind, double blind, triple blind, masking of everyone from everyone else. I think there is a place for anonymous commenting, but if you're not willing to escalate that to the editor, to the journal, to PubMed Commons, or to any of the sort of mainstream places where these things are discussed, there's a, there's a problem at just saying, I'm going to stick it on a wall over here and hope someone notices. So I, I don't know if other people would like to speak in favor of an anonymous commenting, but it seems to me that you know there's a difficulty with expecting journals to monitor the world for possible comments on their papers. Working at university and being a part of the ethical board, we struggled when we were making our own rules if we will allow um, any kind of whistleblowing that is anonymous within the university as well. Now, when you're a close community, you want to allow it because everything should be investigated, but it allows slander and it allows a raising of doubts that maybe really are unfounded at all. But I think it's always a balance of, so one of these cases was actually from a postdoc researcher who was a part of the team who was doing it. So in a way I can understand why they may not necessarily want to say their name. Uh, in an ideal system this would not matter, but in a realistic system, him getting a job from, or her, from you know colleagues or, I think we know how it works. So. I do, I'm completely for open science, and I do sign all of my reviews now, if journals allow it, of course. Um, but I would wish that it's all open, but 
I don't think we're there yet when it comes to the society. It's not just this. I mean, you open Facebook comments, you open YouTube comments, um, people like to hide be kind of opinions. They don't want to maybe go back 10 years because they were young and naive and said something wrong that it sort of haunts them forever. So, yeah. Along those lines, um, I'm curious if these comments on PubPeer predate journal awareness of problems. In other words, even if the journals are not directly aware of the PubPeer comments, is it possible that they could, through some secondary mechanism, result in awareness? So of the cases that they analyzed, the strong uh, suspicions of FFP have always been raised before they came to PubPeer. However, the errors and methodological errors and some of them which have been corrected have been first addressed in PubPeer. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, with that then we will uh, wrap up this last presentation session. Thanks to all the speakers.